Bonjour, mes amis. Right now, we are in the beautiful city of Lyon in France. This is the third largest city in France after Paris and Marseille. And this one's almost right in the center of France. If France was a big square, which kind of it is, it's right there in the middle. And it is the crossroads for a lot of the different cultures within France and also the culinary capital. But today we are on the mighty river passing through beautiful Lyon. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. Welcome everyone, nice to see you here. We are in Lyon. Nathan says it looks so hot over here. Oh yes, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I got my short shorts on. This is a ferry boat ride. Sorry, a boat ride is not a ferry. Um, we're not commuting, so this is only for tourists. It cost me about 15 euro. And we're starting to see the beautiful architecture of Lyon, which is similar to Paris. It's not as uniform as Paris is. Well, very, very similar. George is watching from the USS Couch. Hey, George, welcome to the live video. I was hoping you would come and visit Germany next, but Lyon is a great city since Clemens. Yeah, Germany, a lot of people expect new Germany. I'm not sure why, uh, but I am indeed in France. And the rest of the rest of the trip will be within this great country of France. I mean, I am close to other countries, so they might make cameo appearances. But France is what we're dedicating to for the rest of this trip. Going to places in France where I haven't been to before we go to an old favorite. Emily says, looks very relaxing. Yeah, it is. So I am very remiss to tell you that Facebook has completely locked me out of my own page. It's terrible. I can't post and on my Instagram too. I have no clue why. I have not broken any violations. I always do completely original content. I'm really pissed off. Um, so that's why I'm not on Facebook Live right now because there's no way I can go live. I have no idea why they're locking me out. Uh, very super, super, super frustrating. Uh, so uh, if you are a Facebook viewer um, and you're part of the Facebook group or business of the world, let everyone know if you can. Put a quick post, a quick link to this YouTube so people can know uh, where to tune in here in Lyon, France. Joe says, what the hell, Facebook is crazy. Yeah, I think one of the main reasons why Facebook locked me out, well, one factor could be that I, I've shown a few videos that feature like weapons and I posted photos of like war and um, a dear face, uh, Facebook viewer actually knows a few people who work within Facebook and they said that that might have been mistaken for me showing footage of the war in Ukraine which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I'm, no sh I'm not sure how they mistake images of the I think I showed like the Netherlands Revolution and <laughs> back in the uh, UK, you know, the wars with the Jacobins. I'm not sure how they confuse that with Ukraine, but who knows. Susie says, yeah, on my last nerve. Me too. Me too. Thank you, Joe, for sharing on Facebook. I appreciate you. Wendy says, oh my god, I didn't know. I just found out right now as I tried to go live. I, was, I found it weird that I couldn't post a hotel tour that I edited her today. Yeah, I'll put this out there. If anyone knows anyone who works within Facebook, uh, let me know if you can help. It'll be such a great help. I mean, I, only, I do original content. I don't do content that's copied. There's so many pages out there that just steal content and somehow they get away with it. I've always done original content, so if anyone can help out, do let me know. But nonetheless, let's enjoy Leon. 
Look at this. I didn't know Lyon had its own Eiffel Tower. We're in the third largest city. Right here, friends. Brandy says, I was reminded of the Ukraine with some of the buildings that had gold on top. Maybe that was it. Yeah, yeah, who knows what it could be. Algorithms are super sensitive nowadays. gorgeous and this river is huge it's definitely wider than the Seine from what it seems to me yeah wider than the Tiber in Rome uh, but maybe a little bit less wider than the Thames and definitely a lot less than the East River but I was surprised when I came here I was like wow this river is wide after you know being in Amsterdam and, and Belgium Susie is asking, where are you going? Susie, thank you so much for tuning in. Susie usually watches on Facebook. Susie from Bushwick. Asking where I'm going next. As I mentioned here, France is officially our last country of this trip. Wherever I go to France, you gotta stay tuned. There are nearby countries, and if it feels right, if the stars align, they may make cameo appearances. But France is indeed our last official country of this trip. And I got quite a while. I got until September 15th. Hey Joe, thank you so much. Joe, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Joe is an awesome bobber. Don't, don't write in caps. I could luckily, uh, I could always see your little uh, moderator symbol, which is uh, like a court screw on the trial of Holland. I can see that little symbol. Now, I had not much to chat about Lyon, so enjoy the views. There is a tour inside, let me know if you want to hear bits and pieces of it. Um, however, learn from my mistakes. This is the culinary capital of basically Europe, but it's definitely the culinary capital of France, more so than even Paris. And unfortunately it's August, and everything's closed. <laughs> The French take a very long vacation all throughout August, and they're very serious about it. And some of the best top, top, top restaurants and top bakeries and top cafes are closed for the month. So if you're looking at the city and thinking, wow, this kind of looks a bit empty, it, it, it's because it is. Everyone's on vacation. They went somewhere else. Um, so learn from my mistakes. Don't do France in August. <laughs> it's not the best idea. But I'm here nonetheless, <laughs> so <laughs> now I just got to fully embrace it. Luckily, some vacations for people end at like August 20, 20th, 23rd, so crossing fingers, some places will open up a little bit later in the month. Davis has one amazing trip you had. Oh, yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous trip. Susie says, oh, you'll need to be doing a lot of home cooking. I can show you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I will. Um, I just bought myself. It's a very cumbersome right now because I'm in uh, right by the water's edge. But I bought myself a French press and some uh, coffee grinds so I can make myself coffee in the morning. All right, let's check out a little bits and pieces of the tour. I'm going to be silent as we hear a little bit of the tour. And I'll show you more views. Excuse me.
les bateaux amarrés au pied à l'avant-droit étaient autrefois des bateaux de that you can see on your right use transport boats jugés plus assez rentables ils ont été soit détruits soit rachetés et transformés en habitations comme ceci longer profitable they were broken up are sold for a conversion bleu et blanc sur la gauche transportait autrefois des hydrocarbures. Lui aussi a été transformé en habitation et il a même une piscine aménagée sur le pont avant. The blue and white boats on your left used to transport hydrocarbons. Today it has been converted into a houseboat as well and there is even a swimming pool on its deck at the front.
Board, yeah, the, the top is full. It's completely, there's people all around. So what I just showed you is I bought myself a French press because, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of places are closed for the month of August here in France. It's very normal for people to take very long vacations the entire month. Um, I experienced that in Paris back in 2019. And I did not, for some reason, I thought, oh, maybe Lyon will be different. No, it's not. <laughs> no, not at all. So I ended up getting myself a French press in order to brew my own coffee in the morning, at least. So Susie says, is this the warm por portion? This is the portion where I said that, that you would need elastic <laughs> pants because there's great food. Luckily, a few places are indeed open, so I will be having some great food. Hopefully, I'll be doing a video or two of it. Um, yeah, it's because Lyon is known as the culinary capital. So, Hale says, are you getting in France? Yes, France for the rest of the trip. People who were asking about Germany, I, w I do want to feature Germany, but I realize Germany is such a big country that I feel like Germany deserves the attention that Ireland or the UK deserve, where it's better for me to immerse myself in the culture for a few weeks. And I decided to go somewhere interesting in France. Lyon is only one stop. Because it is the perfect place to go at the end of summer, in my opinion. Much, much more interesting than Germany for the end of summer. So stay tuned. As I mentioned, you gotta you got pack up your shorts. So Joe's asking, how did I get back here? I've been avoiding planes, so luckily the last plane I ended up taking was uh, Copenhagen to, I mean, Stockholm to Amsterdam. So once I was in the Netherlands, I traveled all by train over to Rotterdam, train over to Brussels, and train over to here. I ended up taking two trains. It's the Thales from high speed from Brussels to Paris, and then transferring to another station and taking it, the Fer Ferri Bossa, which I think is pronounced. It's the Italian high speed rail. For some reason, they're running rail now in, within France. Took that Paris to Lyon. Kay says there's new ferry service from France to Ireland. What? <laughs> There's a ferry to Ireland from France? That is, that is a crazy long ferry. I'm surprised. Grey Eyes is asking where I'm going. As I mentioned, I'm close to places, other countries. Service permitting and time permitting and stars aligning permitting and horoscope permitting, and astro cartography permitting, and reading the flames on the candle permitting, I may cameo a few other, other countries. A country or who knows? A lot of things have to align gray eyes for me to cameo another country. But they are close. I mean, there are, there are places that are close to here. Wendy saying, butter and bread at K's, please. <laughs> Ireland will have to wait, we'll have to wait. You need to stay tuned on the channel, says Eugene. Yeah, stay tuned. Don't tune off, don't dare you. Don't dare turn off this channel. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> but but if you if you want to see where I'm going, stay tuned. But this won't be the only Leon broadcast. So there'll, there'll be more Leon. We're taking the boat trip today. What is this? This is gorgeous.
Kenya says maravilloso. <laughs> yeah, that is Italian, uh, but it is indeed maravilloso. Joe says America is falling apart without you. Oh no, <laughs> so sorry to hear that. Or those mountains in the distance. Hello, Ron. Nice to see you here. Welcome. This is a beautiful little island in this river. Oh. Happy Go Lucky asks whether would I go to South America? I do want to go to South America at some point. Argentina is going through some crazy times with, with inflation. Uh, so, Argentina, I hope when, when things stabilize, I'll go to Argentina and Peru, Cusco, many other places, Colombia as well. Also, it depends on cell phone reception. I'm not sure how good the cell phone reception is in those countries. Susie asks, where are we all going for dinner? <laughs> for many, I can find dinner. Wow. Oh, now it's getting gorgeous. So unfortunately, France is going through was a drought. And I think this is not indicator of autumn coming, but it's indicator of the tr trees drying out because of all the very little water. Susie says, I think this is the Scottish Highlands. Susie, I think you're maybe overestimating how big Scotland is. <laughs> Dancer says, we got the Danube, yep. Kay left a 20 um, euro super chat. Thank you so much, Kay. Thank you, thank you so much for the 20 euro super chat. That's so kind of you. Thank you, thank you. Kay, thank you again for responding. I messaged Kay letting her know about the Facebook issue. So thank you, Kay and Joe, for alerting the Facebook, pe Facebook peeps. People don't know I live stream YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch all at the same time. Wow, gorgeous villa. What is this? Now we're. Oh, these guys are fishing. These guys got. These guys got some dinner. This is like Lake Como in Lyon. That's, that's my Airbnb right there. I got a long commute <laughs> to the center of the city. I get, I'm going to use my French press coffee to drink beautiful coffee on this balcony every single morning with these views right here. Look at that. 
Montana has a gorgeous villa. Constructionist asks, is this France? Yes, it is. Lyon, third biggest city in France. Right in the middle. Cultural capital. I mean, sorry, not cultural. Uh, culinary capital of France. That's basically what's most well known for. It has uh, some of the best rated restaurants in the world. Remind me of Bellagio and Lake Como. So everyone slam that like button right now if you're enjoying this video. Libra King says, what's your destination on, uh, what's your criteria on choosing a destination? That is a great question. Number one, for this particular trip, actually just in general, I rather not take too many planes. So if I can avoid flying, I will. So in this case, this was within train distance to my last destination, which was Brussels. Number two, look at this cool suspension bridge. Uh, number two is the biggest factor is if it's a city that has a lot to offer and or it is a great launching point for day trips. So for example, in Brussels, I stayed there for five nights. I did not know too much about Belgium, so I would have booked longer in Belgium if, if I knew how awesome it would be. But for five nights, I knew that I was going to do a day trip at least to Bruges, which I did. I went to Bruges two, day, two, two nights. But um, I also knew that I could have potentially gone to Antwerp or Ghent, which I didn't get to go to. But I knew that I could do more day trips if I wanted to. In, in Amsterdam, there was a whole host of day trips. Harlem, Leiden, the list goes on. Utrecht, I did a lot of them. Rotterdam, I did The Hague, uh, Scandinavian Beach. Again, I did Leiden. And this applies to a bunch of other places. Dublin, um, various UK cities like Manchester. That's the second. And then the third is the more nebulous criteria. The third can't be fully explained. It's intuition. I saw one particular stop on this journey that I knew when I saw Rick Steve's documentary about it. I knew I had to go. I won't tell you what that is. You gotta stay tuned. But I knew. I knew when I had to go. So Leon just made sense in between this and this next destination. Leon also felt right but I got a very, very strong intuition for the next one. So sometimes I go through that. So Neptunster says, are you spontaneously planning? So I planned two months in a row. Uh, I booked 
not planned, but I booked all my lodging and my travel. That means airplane and train. Two months. That ended when I was in Amsterdam, about August 27th. Then I had to book for that other month, but I extended my trip by 15 days. So I'm here through mid-September. That said, I end up planning the rest of my trip and now I'm, I'm all booked all the way through until I go back to New York. The reason I do that is because if I don't book in advance in these Western European countries, it can get rather expensive. And I am not a budget traveler. I rather not uh, stay in hostels. I rather not stay in cheap hotels that are far out of the city center. Uh, I rather not play that game though that might be a fun way to travel because I'd rather be rested <laughs> and not commute too much because I want to give you the best live videos. In order to give you great live videos, I gotta be somewhat rested. So that's why I plan at least my lodging and the in-between travel as much as possible. So I plan all the trains and buses, as I'm saying within France, trains and buses within France and I'll be hopping around and I'm already have all my hotels booked. Aside from that, what I do within each city or whatever day trip I decide to partake in is fairly spontaneous. I don't really plan those ahead of time. So when I did Bruges, I did Bruges that day. I just decided to do it spontaneously. It uh, happened many other places. When I went to Sheffield, I had no idea I was going to go to Sheffield. I just went to Sheffield. Same thing with the Netherlands. I had no idea I was going to Leiden. I just went to Leiden. Chris says, have you looked into getting hotel sponsorships? I've been a sponsor. I was, I was not sponsored, but I was, um, I was granted a discount at Stockholm. So I wouldn't call that a sponsorship they just uh, granted me a discount uh, which was nice and um, yeah hotel sponsorships are tricky I stay in cities for a while so when you see usually big youtubers or Instagrammers doing hotel sponsorships they tend to stay only for about three nights I prefer to stay in the place for a week <laughs> so it gets very cumbersome if I do one hotel sponsorship and then I gotta find the lodging somewhere else in the city for a few other nights. So that's why I don't do it too often. Well, sometimes I do. I do, do in New York as, as sometimes. Neptuneser says, do you consider yourself a frugal traveler with all the luxurious, mesmerizing, high-end French restaurants? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't think I'll be able to partake too much in the super culinary experience that I was hoping for, at least not here in Lyon, because I'm not here to, through the end of August, um, because everything, a lot of things are closed. Am I frugal? No, not really. I tend not to be, I don't tend to be frugal. I like to travel comfortably. If I can't travel comfortably, I won't travel. That's that. That's why, you know, you have some uh, YouTubers. They've been doing this as much as I have, six years or so, uh, like I have. Some of them have traveled the world. Jubinski, Nos Daily, um, Baga Brothers, Bald and Bankrupt, many others. Traveled the entire world. And it's because they traveled rather uh, low cost. They traveled low budget. And they went to countries that were very... Uh, good on the budget. I never been like that, so that's why I haven't traveled like crazy like those guys in the past six years. I don't regret it because oh how I love enjoying these countries of luxury. I'm not spending tens of thousands of dollars, so <laughs> don't worry. Uh, I think my budget for this entire trip might be. I gotta do a final calculation, but it won't be too much. I think I might end up spending about $7,000, $6,000. It might be quite a lot. <laughs> it's gonna be an expensive trip, but uh, I think it's worth it. 
I've I've traveled with a big uh, I've traveled with much stricter budget. I went to London and only spent maybe three thousand dollars for a month. It's one of the most expensive countries in the world, cities in the world. So it is possible to travel on the budget. I went to France in 2019, as I mentioned, and Rome in 2019. I spent maybe a thousand each for those two week trips. The Savior says, has this man turned into felonious fog? I don't know what that reference is. Do let me know. It sounds familiar though. Wendy says, I'm pleased you're taking us to the journey. Yes. Oh, my iPhone's burning up. I gotta get in the shade. Phileas Fogg. Let me know who Phileas Fogg is. Yeah, maybe I'll do the final calculation when I'm done, but um, probably be around $7,000. I think so. Yeah. I've been to a few expensive hotels, so it might be a little bit more. But I think this will be definitely less than 10000 But again, I traveled very calmly, comfortably. Um, you can definitely do a three-month trip and spend the half of what I'm doing. Also, I don't really count uh, everything. Uh, so I, I check my bank accounts to make sure I'm not overspending. But I don't really like say, mm, I can only have this amount for food. If I see good food, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it if I have the money for it. I am not spending anything on debt, so I'll make that very important and make that very clear uh, because some people A, think I'm super extremely rich, I'm not extremely rich at the moment, and B, I am not traveling on debt. So there's no debt I'm acquiring from anything of all my trips. I've never traveled on debt. I always had my cash to travel, so I would recommend doing the same. Travel with the cash you have. If you if you are in debt, clear your debt first and then travel because it'll be a peace on your mind. It'll be way better to travel in that in that state. I would I would recommend. It. Vanessa says, "What's your sunglasses brand?" Warby Parker. Susie says, "You're traveling in a trust fund." No, <laughs> no, I, I do not come from a rich family. That's what a lot of people like to think on TikTok on. YouTube. Neptune sir says no use of credit cards. No, no. I travel on debit. I don't use credit cards. Hey, Chris. Oh yeah, I'm Chris, hundred percent. I mean, I can make a few changes in the rest of my trip, or if, or if they fit in for New York, that'll be interesting. So, Chris, do let me know. Send me a direct message. Instagram is not working for me on not Facebook. Oh no. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> Chris, do send me a direct message. Send me a direct message to my personal Instagram, the Ariel Vieira. Because I, I'm locked out of urbanists on Instagram and Facebook. I have no idea why. Uh oh, I got an update night pop. What time will you finish the boat? I think we're coming to a close. We just turn back around. Maybe like 10 to 20 minutes more. About 20 minutes more. Lino says, I worked I worked in Dijon for several weeks. The food was so good, I completely forgot about the mustard. <laughs> hey, Lino, that's awesome to hear. So we got to give Lino a round of hearts. He encouraged me to try West Valeteran beer over in Brussels. I went to a bar that had it on the menu and I did not think anything of it because it was 15 euro. I thought it was way too expensive. And he was like, no, you gotta try it. And I did. And I made two videos of it that are on Facebook and TikTok. And it was amazing. The best beer I had in my entire journey thus far is West Blutterin. I might be mispronouncing that slightly. But it's around West Blutterin. It's a super rare Trappist beer where they only sell a very, very limited amount of crates, completely illegal or against the terms of the monks who make them to resell them. People do resell them anyway. There's a black market and they sometimes cost up to $150 per bottle in the U.S. to buy in the black market.
Ava says, uh, Chris is right, getting sponsorships will uh, help with your travels. So you won't touch your trust fund. <laughs> I don't have a trust fund, but yeah. You know, the reason I don't do too many sponsorships, I had the benefit of working with Rise New York. That's why I'm able to, one of the reasons I'm able to afford this trip. Uh, I, had a, I have a great freelance client I still work with on a yearly basis. And uh, I also had the pleasure of working with Bulaba, which might continue to be the case also with Rise. And I'm excited. There might be a really, really cool New York organization that I might work with. Really, really cool. Um, but because of those partnerships, I was able to do some cool stuff. The reason I don't reach out to too many sponsors when I do these trips is because that could get rather cumbersome. It's a lot of work to reach out to them. And then potentially some of them want a lot of content, which I don't think really is appropriate. And some of them have no idea what live video is, so the only thing I can lean on is my TikTok. Susie says, looking forward to more Bulova vids. There's one more in this set of three Bulova vids. And then um, if you really, really enjoy them, comment on both the TikTok and the Facebook that you enjoyed them. And then I'll be, um, hopefully I'll be working with them again. Ava says, good for you. Have fun. Greetings from New York. Ava. Oh, Ava, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Bulova has plenty of time. <laughs> Jonathan says, have you been to Marseille? You know, the only... This is my second French city I've ever been to. So I've only been to Paris. I did a day trip to Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy. And now this, Lille. So I haven't been anywhere else in France. But the rest of the trip is dedicated to France. Ron says, I love the Jason Bourne look. <laughs> Keep it, keep it secret. Yeah. Can't let, <laughs> can't let the secret organization find me over here. Gotta do my work in peace. Neptune sir says, "Can't wait for a culinary experience." Yeah, cross the fingers. Wish me luck that I can find the place that's open. If you are from Lyon or been to Lyon before and you know about the restaurants, do let me know which ones you recommend. And even better, do let me know if you know any that are definitely open during August. I'll be so appreciative. Ooh, look at this. This is a very old building. So Lyon was the original capital of France for, for many, many, a long, long time. The Romans, this was their capital, this Gaulish area that they overtook. So this is a Roman city. And that's a cool thing. I love visiting Roman cities. So some things we might be seeing could date to ancient Rome. We will definitely be seeing at least one thing dating back to ancient Rome during this trip to Lyon. Sarah says, how can you be a member? Sarah, one or two ways. Pressing that join button right now on Facebook. Go to my uh, channel, Urbanist, and you'll see a, a join button. Or you won't get a actual tag yeah right here you get access to more tours patreon.com slash urbanist so two ways pressing that join button on youtube or going to patreon.com slash urbanist Facebook is worrying me even more and more. This is the second time that I'm having issues. So if you are a Facebook supporter, I really do appreciate you supporting on Facebook. Uh, but if you can and if you want, consider changing over to Patreon or YouTube if you really want that uh, special emojis and, and sticker. Uh, 
I mean emblem. You end up getting an emblem if you're a YouTube supporter. So consider doing one of those too, if you want to change. Alright, let me go back inside because I'm going to get fried up here. <laughs> 